Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I've become totally enamored with Ian Gillen's voice, and it's all your fault. It was through your recommendations in the YouTube comments that I discovered him, and I'm going to continue following your suggestions and listen to your most requested Deep Purple song, Highway Star. Let's get to it. love that slide and the way we have it first and the right and then the left. Ah, it's such a great, fun, energized way to begin a piece. Not to mention that the groove of this, the way it's set up, it just kind of makes you feel like you're driving, like you're on a road trip. It's like, it's a really nice groove. Okay, back to the beginning. I also love the way that it feels kind of bluesy as it goes down. It feels like a little bit down home, right? <laughs> mm, the syncopation there is awesome. Is there a third one in there? Oh my gosh. I think I even missed the, the third one before. I It's so cool. Right? Left. And then there's one that's center. Ah! I'm really curious if that was three different recordings, three different takes, or if they just placed it three different times at the same take, just copy and paste, essentially. I don't know. This is... This was made a while ago, so I'm not sure what the production process was of it, but it's really cool to listen to the way the vibrato as the note is being held affects the sound of the other notes being held in their vibratos. There's a little like, uh, sort of this, uh, it's like a, a sizzling in the sound, an extra buzz that happens when it starts to rub against the other vibratos essentially. just is such a good singer. I love the way he's got that power. He's got that punch in it as well. That's really coming from a lot of the consonants and the sustaining power. But and then the way he is able to weave in different registrations is incredible. And, and the way he's able to add different textures to his voice is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna go back and talk about some of those as they go by. I love the verb here too. Right, the way he adds different, uh, like some distortion, some harsher texture there. And I love the way that there are certain notes in there that he says, I'm gonna make this less specific on the pitch because he nails his bookend pitches. He's super specific that with that. And then he essentially takes 
some of his other pitches and makes them a little more spoken, a little more tossed off, so it feels casual and fun. It almost sounds like a horn. Right, the aggression behind yeah is impressive. So high. And the way he did that last line so cleanly and added a little bit of harmony in there with just a really nice, relaxed, even vibrato just tells you that even with the moments where he's really going for a note, tons of guts he's still singing in a really healthy way. He comes back to that ground zero that is just clean, precise, healthy singing. Mm. I like the way that the, I think there's a time signature switch right in there. It feels like it gets a little truncated and then they roll into the next line before you feel like you've really rusted that much. Oh, I don't think they actually switch the time signature. It's a, a syncopation that happens. Ah, it's part, it's truncating the phrasing is what's happening too. So you get a little bit of syncopation and a truncation of the phrase. Usually you'd have like another measure of 4-4 four, four, and that's why it feels like it runs in and rushes into the next part. croons those lower notes. It reminds me a little bit of Robert Plant in there. Ah, it's really fun singing. Ah. Oh, she's a killer machine. She got Man, sometimes these classic rock songs, I'm just surprised by uh, how sexy they are. <laughs> like, he's he's really, really into this woman. You can tell. <laughs> and the oohs and the ahs. It's just, I think that I was really struck in a whole lot of love by how overtly sexual songs were back at an earlier time, I thought, oh, we've advanced so much, they're so much more sexual now, right? No, no, I think that they were just as sexual back then, which sometimes leaves me a little bit surprised. So anyhow, yay for expression. I need her, I see her. <laughs> yeah, I like the harmony that he adds in there. Paganini, the way that that's designed, the way it's really quick and the, I'm, I'm assuming this was probably, I think this was probably done on the organ there. The way the, the finger work is just super precise like that, it feels like something Baroque. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> That's super fun. Um, also, the entrance to this, is it here? Oh, there we go. I love the way that that almost sounds like a car engine revving up. <laughs> It's also super fascinating how the sound visualization or the spatialization of it shifts because it starts far right and then crosses over to the center and go back again. Ah, oh. like really far right for that. So it feels like it's getting closer. There's movement in the soundscape. It even goes over left. This was actually partially a duet between uh, Richie Blackmore and John Lord at some point. Right, we've got like a really clear duet happening here. It's so fun. It feels so retro video game. And then we have the bending a little bit here, which feels more like a street. Yeah. Let's see the patient again. Hmm. That's a cool shift there in the middle. I think it's so interesting how underneath all of this, we just have this consistent note that's played over and over. It's almost like a pedal tone or an ostinato. It's just like, um, yeah, it's over and over. It's a G, it goes. It's over and over and over. I had read that they composed this on their tour bus at one point. And I think maybe the feeling of the monotonous wheels rolling all the time, maybe that idea um, helped give life to like, oh, let's just play the same note over and over. <laughs> there it is, in the bass. I want to go back to this, this instrumental thing. There's some really interesting things to digest in here. So you can really hear in there how the base of the song is one repeated note and then there's essentially excursions from it and it'll jump up in pitch and jump back down and to ex make that excursion even more prominent they have this syncopation where it sort of bounces out of the expected rhythm. And that lineup also is extremely significant. Oh, I love the way he does brain there. He does a little slide of it at the end and slide into it even. <laughs> And he, uh, he had the chance to do the exact same expression there and he changed it up. He, he's really very 
deliberate, I think, about adding little extra mm, bits of like a cherry on top, a little little kiss here and there, something to uh, draw us into the story more and express those lyrics. Gosh, it's so good. The way he yells up there is so good. It's so well supported. You can hear that power in the sound, but it doesn't sound like it's really tight. It doesn't sound squeezed. It's a, it's just a great sound. Oh man, that's, it's good. Oh man, this is cool. I I think it's fun how he's playing with the pitch here. Oh, and I like I think one of the things that's sticking out to me is the melodic choice. It sounds like it's asking a question and asking another question and going, uh-huh, with it. it. It's just, I feel like Richie Blackmore is speaking to us through a guitar. <laughs> it's very sentency. I love the harmony, it's so interesting. Very surprising pitches in the harmonic choices there. Whoa. I really cool. And I also have a feeling um, as it's going along, it has a fun groove for driving, which makes total sense with the name. But there's also a way of pushing up and pushing up. And I think if I were driving, I'd want to speed <laughs> if I was listening to this. Apparently, this is not an uncommon thing that people want to drive faster with this, which makes sense because of the lyrics too, right? Nobody's going to take my car. Even if I'm being pulled over for speeding, I'm going to drive faster than that. Oh, mm. Don't break. I don't encourage breaking the law here. Okay. But this really does make a person want to speed, I think. Um, <laughs> I have to also talk about the fact that this speediness apparently was one of the things that launched speed metal, which is so cool because I've kind of come of it all backwards. I've had this introduction into metal through a lot more modern metal and then gradually down to this classic rock. And I think it's so cool the way this has a, a more driving force that apparently that launched a new genre. That's awesome. That's really awesome. <laughs> well, let's go back again to this. Right there. Whoa. Bluesy harmonies, expanded harmonies. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That 
the bitch bins are awesome. <laughs> I like the way it tumbles. I love that he knew it was so good that he's like, yeah, people should hear it twice. I think it's just twice. Maybe it's three times. Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's done a really great job of essentially expanding on different ideas. Sometimes an idea is a great idea and you just need to repeat it when you're doing some sort of improvisation, which I, from my understanding, right, they wrote this all while the tour bus was going from point A to point B and performed it when they got to the next spot in a replacement of their other starter song. So I'm guessing there's a lot of improvisation that was involved in the composition process. So it makes sense that he'd be like, yeah. That was a good sound. I'm going to do it again. And then expands on it at the end. really like the way his voice is produced here. It has a vintagey feel for sure. I think it's doubled. And it it has, it's the reverb in it as well that's great, but I still have a lot of clarity on his sound. Um, it doesn't have that same close, close, close mic presence that a lot of stuff today has. It's got a little echo, it almost feels like we are in a car driving past or just in a bigger space. I love his half spoken half sun thing. And I like the way he snaps out his words, big fat tires. Like, it's got so much great enunciation involved. And then it also has fun rhythm involved. I just want to go back on this ending part and talk about that phrase and how good his tuning of it is. There's descending chromatics in here. Those are typically some of the most difficult things for singers to tune. And he just does such a great job. And he's so aware of the pitch and when he's going to be right on it versus half singing, speaking it. Uh, but I, we need to take a moment and appreciate this descending phrase and how good a job he does of it. That. <sighs> so good. That third note. Really well tuned. I just feel like this is such an ideal road trip song. It's fun. It's got breakout moments. It makes you feel like you're on top of the world and road trips should be fun. Maybe with cruise control on because otherwise, yeah, I think I'd be speeding. So let's all cruise control be good. <laughs> Anyhow, um, if you would like to see some more analysis of Ian Gillen's voice, which as I said before, I am totally adoring. I hope you'll check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.